Now, the problems facing our fruit farmers this summer were highlighted on our programme yesterday when we saw apples which were, in effect, cooking on the tree because the summer heatwave has been so fierce. The hot, dry conditions are also posing huge challenges for our sheep and dairy farmers. And Chrissy Reedy is live for us at one of those farms in Benenden near Cranbrook. So, Chrissy, how are the animals there coping with the drought? Natalie, it's fair to say it is challenging times for farmers and the animals. Now, these lovely ladies would normally spend about 15 hours a day, say, out grazing on luscious green grass in the field. But, of course, the fields are brown. There is nothing to graze on. So they are literally just going out to the fields at the moment for exercise. And, of course, what's crucial here is the, the health of the livestock. Of course, these are dairy, uh, dairy cows. They produce milk for the farmers. It's their livelihood. So I think for farmers generally across the board right now it's tough his land on the Romney marsh is parched and the ditch remains bone dry with no rainfall since June Tony's having to provide drinking water for his flock on the mains and with no grass for them to eat he's now having to supply supplementary food some of these lambs that were born out here in April have never seen, you know, any, any amount of fresh green grass. They've done very well on this dry stuff, but it's definitely time to get them away if you can and uh, rain. You know, we've had a, a little light bit of rain now, but we've had absolutely nothing since June. No measurable rain at all. At this dairy farm in Kent, with little or no grass, they're having to dip into their winter feed stocks to ensure their herd can still produce milk. It's pretty desperate. We retail our milk directly, so um, unless they get a decent amount of food, um, we will be looking at a decrease in milk production, which could cause problems. You know, all farmers will be finding that it will cause problems later on. And that's a cost that at some point will be passed on to consumers. Food prices are going to go up. Uh, we're going to have to spend more of our, our budget on food and we're going to have to be much more careful about our shopping. I mean, eight, nine years ago, people took big trolleys in and threw everything in. Now they do a basket shop, they shop more regularly and we're finding that they're shopping more of the own label, which is the, the value item. Come on, up you go. Back on the Romney Marsh, Tony's moving some of his livestock to another farm in East Sussex, where they still have a little grass available. So you want about three or four inches? Three or four inches would be perfect. That would, and that's what yeah. would normally be? There. That's what would normally be here at this stage. Today's showers are welcome, he tells me, but time is critical. Prolonged rainfall to saturate the ground and replenish the ditches is desperately needed. And needed now. Well, Tony, who you just heard from there, the sheep farmer, he has been sheep farming, he told me today, since he was a boy. And he said the last time he saw, the only time, should I say, he has ever seen the land so parched was back in 1976. And, of course, we all know about that drought. So I think at the moment, farming, you're always thinking ahead, the next season, the next year and beyond. Having to dip into your winter food is not an ideal situation because, of course, it's the knock-on effect. So I think for farmers though, across the board, as I said... Natalie, it is difficult. Well, it clearly is, Chrissy. Thank you very much. Well, we can have a chat now.